of heaven. In the name of Jesus, this is our season of rising. Our season of rising. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. The gates of hell cannot prevail. The gates of hell cannot prevail. The gates of hell cannot prevail in Africa. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church in Africa. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church in North America. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the rising of the church in South America. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the rising of the church of God in Europe. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the rising of the church in Asia. In the name of Jesus. We arise, we arise, we arise in glory, we arise in honor, we arise in strength, and the gates of hell cannot prevail. Darkness cannot comprehend us. Hallelujah. From glory unto glory. From glory unto glory we arise. In the name of Jesus.
é pra angústia da eira batadada, é precoce a lavara na doce atada, é de catai da neira da nasce da nama, é pra angústia da namada, e a namada, oh Jesus.
God moves mountains and causes walls to fall. He causes walls to fall. And we thank him because of who he is and who he continues to be with us. Hallelujah. We know there was war in heaven. We're looking at that. I want to welcome everybody. Please come with somebody by our side. Okay. Uh, okay, just welcome in as, as casual a way as you can. Um, uh, you know, because of... Um, government regulations and all that. 
I don't want there to be a lot of movements. I like I always tell people, if you are less than a hundred and uh, five people and ten people move at the same time, that means if we have to ten thousand, just multiply how many people we move among those ten thousand at the same time. Praise God. It's always good to um, be attentive to the word. I want to welcome everybody, those who are um, the larger family, those who are on, uh, on um, uh, MixLR, I hope they are on already. Those who are on Zoom, I hope they are on already. And then those who are on um, Facebook, I uh, want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome every one of us that are here and um, those who are yet coming. Praise God. Hallelujah. We've been considering the issue of the warfare, the, vic the, the contention and um, we have been saying the contention and the victory. Pastor Collins and Mrs. God bless you, sir. Amma, you're welcome. God bless you so much. The Mrs. is a prophet. So, it's a prophet and a pastor. And then we don't want to give plenty title. So, we just say Mrs. Praise God. <laughs> God bless you, man. Thank you very much for being around. Hallelujah. Uh, so, we have been considering the issue of the contention and the victory there is a contention that is on and there is a victory that has been promised the contention was prophesied and the contention came to pass the victory also is prophesied and the victory is coming to pass now on the first day one of the things we identify is that the contention the point of contention is man and his house the earth and by extension, the entire universe. You know, that is, those are the points of, that's the point of contention. Man and his house. That's the point of contention. And the place of contention is in the heavens. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And we said, we try to identify what's heaven. And uh, my wife really actually now knocked it in this morning by saying it is in the soul of man. I was coming systematically to eventually now register that on the soul of man because uh, this contention is in the second heaven. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 said there was war in heaven. And then I was trying to um, tell us what part, what heaven is that? Where is that war? What heaven is the war? In what heaven? Do we have the war? There was war in heaven. Praise God. You know, we're talking about what part of heaven is there that war? Where is the war taking place? And then we're saying the war is taking place in the second heaven because. We have already stated that in the heavens of God, say thy word is settled in heaven, forever in heaven. You know, there is a tradition, and if we don't win people away from the traditional beliefs, they will not be able to understand what's going on. You know, there is this tradition that Satan rebelled against God in heaven. And then they said, some people said Satan used to lead God's choir. You know, and I see how that uh, about four, four days ago. Isaac was with me. When uh, okay, he has some phones in his head now, in, on, in his ears now, so he can hear me. Now, the person still said that Satan was the choir leader of heaven, and that uh, it's, it's his song that he used to deceive people in the end of the day because that was his job in heaven. He was the choir leader of the tr of the of the choir in heaven, and because of his uh, of his uh, singing ability. You know, maybe he just crossed over to the other side. I don't know. He started his own. <laughs> Praise God. He started his own. Even the devil, we're going to be looking at the subject of who he is. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. it is, it, Satan is never above God. Anyway, let's not, let's not move away from our subject. So he said, thy word is established, is settled in heaven forever. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So, uh, there, there is no rebellion in the heaven of God. The will of God is always done. Say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is done in heaven. So there is a heaven where nothing can ever go contrary to God's order. There is a heaven where some nothing can ever go contrary to God's will and desires. And that is a settled place. Now, but there is another heaven from where Lucifer, son of the morning, fell. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So, in, in uh, Ezekiel in chapter 14, let's see Ezekiel 14 briefly. Oh, Isaiah 14, sorry. Isaiah 14. I think Isaiah is before Ezekiel. I am trusting God to make certain things very straight this morning or this evening. How are thou falling from where? Praise God. Are you there? Isaiah chapter two, uh, chapter 14. How are thou falling from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning. Let's read though so that we can understand what is going on. Say, how are you called down to the ground? You who weaken the nations. But you have said in your heart, I will ascend into eh? heaven. heaven. I will ascend into heaven. Now, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So, two places called heaven there. Hallelujah. Where was Satan's normal residence? In heaven. But from that heaven, he still wants to go to another heaven, which is above the stars of God. The stars of God there are not necessarily these stars that we're seeing physically. They are the ruling powers of God. Hallelujah. The ruling powers of God where that establish divine control. Praise God. Hallelujah. If I want to know the stars of God, Michael is a star of God. Praise God. He said, Michael, which is your priest, shall stand with you in the last days. You know, and let me quickly qualify that statement. You see, because most of the Pentecostal church, and I'm praying that this message will not be interrupted online. There will be no problems with network. There, everything will go well so that we can always go to this teaching and take certain type of alignments. You know? So when we talk about um, Lucifer falling from heaven, you know, he, he had been in one heaven and then he aspired to go to another heaven. Amen. Amen. So, from that heaven, which he aspired to go forth, he was, of course, resisted above the stars of God. Okay, I want to talk about Michael uh, being one of the stars of God. Gabriel being one of the stars of God. Hallelujah. Amen. These are ruling spirits, ruling powers. So, I want to say something about the, the Jews and the understanding of the things of the end of days today among many Pentecostal, especially Pentecostal ministers. There is a separation, too much separation between the Jews and the Church of God relating to the things of that will happen. In, in Daniel, God told Daniel, say, "A Michael, which is your priest, shall stand for you in the last days." Hallelujah. But you see, we have made it that okay, Michael is going to stand for the Jews. But you see, there is this concept in God's heart of the people of God. There was a time that the only people of God were the Jews. Hallelujah. There was a time when the only people of God were the Jews. Now, at the time when that prophecy will be fulfilled, the people of God will have changed in content. It will be both Jews and Gentiles who have come into Christ. That will be the people of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So here we see Michael in Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. And Michael fought. The dragon also fought. So that is already being fulfilled in the end of days as Michael stands to fight for God's people. You see, because the misunderstanding of some of these scriptures has made us to form some fantastical end time, you know, things. And then, you know, the truth is this. Those who are actually against us, the human beings who are representing the evil powers who are against us, they are reading what we are, are writing. They are reading what we are saying in error. And they are trying to make the issue of the end time to fall in line with our error. And it is a deliberate ploy of God to deceive them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so the Michael is 
is standing for the people of God and fighting. He's not going to start. So that's why a lot of people read the book of Revelation and conclude that it's for the Jews alone. But the people of God, the context and the, 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 the tenor of the people called the people of God for whom Michael will stand in the end of days have changed. They have been added to. So Michael is no longer just standing for Jews today. He is standing for the entire people of God. Because the war is against the kingdom. It is not against the seed of Abraham after the flesh. Alone. Praise God. In fact, the war is against all of humanity. So we're reading, so we're not talking about Lucifer. So we're talking about where is the warfare taking place. Even though we're feeling the effect of the warfare here on the ground. But the warfare really is taking place in heaven. And we're saying which heaven? So let's talk about how many heavens. I've already talked a little bit about it in the first message. You know, Paul said, I went to the third heaven. And he called that heaven paradise. And he saw certain things, heard certain things from God. You understand? That it was unlawful for mouth to enter. He called that heaven the third heaven. And that was where God was. And it's what is called Mount Zion also. Hallelujah. The sides of the north. The city of the great king. Above that heaven, there is no other heaven. There is no existence. Hallelujah. Only God is exalted above that heaven. Hallelujah. Say, be exalted, O Lord, above the heavens, and thy glory fills everywhere, fills space, fills the universe. So, when we're talking about Lucifer, so Lucifer did not, did not go to heaven and try to overthrow God. He was in a particular heaven. That heaven where he is, or where he stands, where he lives, where he's domiciled, rules over the earth hallelujah Amen. that heaven does what rules over the earth Dan daniel was told i mean nebuchadnezzar was told that he was being punished so that he may know that the heaven rule over the earth praise god that he may know what that the heaven rule over the earth so there is this heaven that rules over the earth and that heaven is so powerful even though it is not the heaven where god lives it is the heaven where elohims live pastor praise was trying to talk about elohims the other time they are spirits the elohims praise god it is the heaven where now the, who are these elohims they are the controlling powers over nations over cities over issues and they are domiciled in heaven now when i say that heaven the what i wanted to take out of it is not just making that heaven a place but a point a stature a a place of a particular authority it is where authority is wielded hallelujah it is a place of thrones that's why when god from the third heaven sends um gabriel to come and give a message to daniel in who was in the physical realm of persia there's also a spiritual realm of persia hallelujah okay so as before the before the archangel could come it was resisted because he was going to another man's he was going to pass through a realm hallelujah and the owner of that realm is an Elohim that is against God, against Jehovah, against Yahweh, against the one that is exalted above the heavens. So that spirit resisted him. The name they gave to him was that is the prince of Persia. The prince there means the ruler, the authority, the, the, the one that is enthroned over the realm of Persia. Praise God. The one that is enthroned over the realms of Persia. That was what that was what um, that was why he resisted him. And I will resisted him. Michael came and fought. Michael um, is another spirit in that regard. Hallelujah. Amen. 
in that, in that kind of stature also. Okay, so we are trying to talk about where he was. He said, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will also sit in the mount of the congregation on the farthest, on the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, into the lowest sides of the pit. Now, I know that this has happened at a particular time as a cyclical, but it's a cyclical fulfillment of prophecy. But it is going to happen in the future. Praise God. You know, Jesus talked about this place. He said, and, and, and I behold, and behold, I see Satan fall like lightning. Hallelujah. Amen. I see Satan fall like lightning. Because Satan, now why did he call, call, say Satan fell like lightning? Because a light is a way maker. Light gives direction. So if when Satan falls as lightning, that means Satan's place as leader, as ruler over the sphere of man is destroyed and completely obliterated. Hallelujah. Amen. Destroyed and completely obliterated. Now, that is also what is going to happen when in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, and the place was, his place was no longer found. He fought and he was removed. Let's see Revelation 12. Now, in this type of war, one of the things we need is knowledge, understanding, revelation. That's one of the things we need. Praise God. Amen. Because without knowledge, without understanding, we cannot um, come into the proper conception of the warfare. We can't. Let's see. Um, verse 7, Revelation 12, 7. And war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels also fought, but they did not prevail. Praise God. You're welcome, Pastor. God bless you. Pastor Robin, God bless you. You're welcome. Amen. So, you see, and what broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels also fought, but they did not prevail, and there was no place found for them in heaven any longer. Did you get that? In heaven, no place was found for them. Does that not mirror the prophecy of Isaiah? So the prophecy of Isaiah, like I've been saying before you came in, is at both occurred before and will still occur again. Praise God. That was what happened when Jesus Christ said, I see Satan fall from heaven as lightning. When did he say, see that? When works were done. When he sent his apostles out and then they brought good reports of works. Hallelujah. Of great work that they had done. Spreading the gospel of the kingdom. Say, I see Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So the heavens where this contention is, is in the second heaven. Never in the heaven of God. It's never in the heaven of God. The heaven of God is a settled kingdom place. It's a settled throne. It's a heaven is thy throne. Nothing can shift that. So let's remove from our mind this concept that Satan went to, when Satan was in heaven, one day he just woke up and then he rebelled against God. And he scattered heaven. Ah, the only, <laughs> most of our true God, though, because he took one third of the angels. Ah, God had to run into hiding. His angels, his, his soldiers were defending him. Now, now, how are you going to be confident that we can win this battle if that's our God? You understand? For by the time we begin to even talk about the devil himself, we want to really find out if, pos if it is possible that a being can receive a another type of nature independent of the life giver from whom all things come. You do get what I'm saying? I'm not going to say more than that. But is it possible 
He that is the existence, the existence that fills all things, that is all in all, nothing outside of him, nothing beyond him, yeah. not uh, absolutely everything is within his cover. And then somebody now gets out of that existence to get something else that is contrary to his nature. If that were possible, then that person is also God because he has ordered another type of existence which God does not know. It's beyond God. So we're not really sure who is going to win this battle. <laughs> Did you get that? He said, Thou art the anointed cherub that cover it, and I have, made, I have set the soul. Praise God. <laughs> You know, really, really, we, we don't know. We, we won't be sure. We really need to pray for God to give our God strength. <laughs> so that he can win this battle. <laughs> we need to pray for him. <laughs> so that he can be strong enough. So nothing can touch the realm of the sphere of God's authority. Where he is. That is settled. The psalmist said, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. He said, thy kingdom come. He didn't say, Lord, build your kingdom there. You know, we have some songs that are just descriptions of our innocent hearts to God. As we worship, we come and build your throne. The throne is only built here. This is the realm of man. He said, the heaven of the heavens are the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of man. That's the one we messed up. Nothing can touch his own. You know, why I'm going this way is because n battles are fought by knowledge. He said the weapons of our warfare it are not carnal. The word weapon, I mean warfare there, is the word strategy or strategia. Battles are fought strategically. Praise God. When the white man came into Africa, we already had soldiers. But were there any match for them? Because when you are saying, ah, say, Akiti, Lolija, Ija, Lolija, ha, you know, the guy has great muscles. And he's the best wrestler in the, in the, in the village. In fact, in the surrounding town, they have done wrestling matches and he has won. So they put him in front of the wall. And he's already boasting, I'm going to kill the Oyibo man. But the Oyibo man has strategy. He had done something that looked like cane like this, that looked like one wood, useless wood. And he doesn't need to move close to you to kill you. Meanwhile, Akiti, he said, yeah, come, come, come. And they see Akiti fall down the ground, Yakata. So all the, all the soldiers say, if Akiti can fall like this, something there inside that stick, where this man they point, they ran back. Praise God. So, knowledge is power. We need to have accuracy of knowledge and understanding. And that's why I'm praying that, you know, God has said Jerusalem is going to be inhabited as a nation without walls, as a city without walls. So, we are, today, every time we are ministering from the corners of our room, we are ministering to Jerusalem, a city without walls. So I'm praying that this message will not be tampered with so that people can watch it again and again and again and again. Because we need to have the correct mindset about this warfare. And then we need to know how we're going to win. When we have the right mindset about it, the right knowledge, then we walk surely and confidently, knowing that no devil can stop divine counsel from coming to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So there was war in heaven, so we have established it. Now, so that heaven that he's talking about there is the second heaven and it, it, it's, it's, it's the soul of man also. Now we said now it is being fought in the second heaven where you have, he said, principal, he said the weapons of our warfare are not cannabis, my to go to put no, no. Um, he said, uh, though we walk, walk in the flesh, we do not rest after the flesh. Um, which one is that? Can you quote me Ephesians 6, 12? Huh? We do not walk against flesh and flesh, but again, hey, principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. That word high place also means heavenly places. So is that same heaven 
where after the fall of man, spiritual forces of Satan took a hold and they began to rule and they began to give man, they began to teach man things, stuff. Stuff that has to do with what we call our culture today. Things that, that rule our civilization. That is the norm. That is even ruling church. That's what's ruling church. A lot of people in church, a lot of church organizations are being ruled by what these guys have laid down. And you can't take their weapon and beat them with it. So we have to know what is their own. What is our own. Drop their own and take our own. Because there are, there, are, there are churches today that are ruling by the 24 laws of power. Is it 48 laws of power? Rules that Babylonians used to rule. They say if anybody comes against you in your system, you crush him. They say you don't smile at everybody all the time. They are saying you just frown. You, it maintains your authority. That's not, that's not Christ. Yes, sir. <laughs> Praise God. That's not who we are becoming. That's not who we are. You know, I was ministering this morning. I just, I saw, I, I just saw a proper description of we in Christ. I said, you know, you gave birth to that baby boy, you know, or baby girl, and you put the father's robe on him, father's suit, father's trousers. That's Christ. Christ, we are in Christ. Hallelujah. But as we grow, as that child begins to grow, you understand? Before his hand cannot, is very far, as the is far from the earth, to to the outside of the suit. Before the leg cannot reach. More than here. But as it grows, it begins to come out and occupy and occupy and occupy and take that place. Then one day, he's six foot tall and he's like his father. And that's what God is looking for. Sons that has put on Christ, that has occupied. He has put Christ. We are in him, but we are growing into him in all things. Hallelujah. So if we don't have accuracy of knowledge and understanding, it becomes a little difficult for us to understand the nature of the battle, the place of the battle, and the end of the battle. So let's see Revelation chapter 13. And I want to quickly just straighten something out. Now, let's start from verse 5. It says, And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. He was given a mount, speaking blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You know, one of the things I have said, the Lord has shown me is that, yes, like I put up sometimes back, um, the kingdom is not a series of messages. But you see, when the kingdom, when the gospel of the kingdom begins to be altered again and taught again, there will be a new set of understanding that will come with it. Yeah. Hallelujah. With the, at that season, God would cause to gush out a new series of understanding. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, that is very, very important for us to know. Now, so, some, what I've read out now we have understood it in another way before in a way before but we're coming into a better understanding of it now it says he, will, he was given a mouth to speak now um to speak great things and blasphemies to blaspheme god his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven now God, we know, okay, God, our uh, God, we know where he is in our heart. We just know that he's the, oh, he's the ultimate authority. But what is his tabernacle? His tabernacle are his people, those who have come into the fullness, those who have come into um, uh, the man-child, those who have come into levels, you know, of heights in God. And then he says also, and um, those who dwell in heaven, and then 
um, it says something about those who dwell on earth. So it was going to you to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given over every tongue and tribe. Um, that's not what. Then he was he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Okay, his tabernacle is where God is found. It's ta that's where his tabernacle is, where God is found. The church is where God is found. That's where God dwells. He said, when people come together in my name, I am in the midst of them. There, I am in the midst of them. And then you now have, um, after his tabernacle, and then those who dwell in heaven. Now, this book talks about three dwelling places. Hallelujah. There are those who dwell in heaven. There are those who dwell on the earth. And those who dwell by are the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. You understand? So, there are three types of dwelling places. So, when he says those who dwell in heaven, he's not talking about those who dwell in an invisible heaven that is not visible and touchable and palpable to us. He's talking about those who dwell at a higher level, or you understand, of, of the conception of Christ. In whom a higher level of the quantum of Christ have been birthed and born. Hallelujah. Amen. Those are those who dwell in heaven. And, um, and everyone shall worship him that don't have their name written in the book of life. I don't know whether that is... Uh, I don't know whether we can at this time properly say that everybody who has been born again um, is the one that have their names written in the book of life. I don't know, but I, it's not something I have come to conclusion with, but I have my own conjectures about that because of this place. Now, the book of life is beyond just being saved. Praise God. The book of life is beyond just being born again, just confessing the Lord. Yes, we have the life of God in us, but this life that he's talking about here is not just having life in the spirit, in your spirit. He's talking about those who have the life of God already governing Praise God. Then, that is much more about what he's talking about. He say, and those who dwell on earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life. But we know that um, this is beyond just those who are, he's not talking about, oh, no Christian will worship him. Hallelujah. That's not what he's talking about. Because even right now, even though we worship God consciously, there are other things that are Lord over us unconsciously. There are other things that are, and that's what Christ is trying to clean out of our souls. That's why the battle is in that place. Hallelujah. The battle is to prevent Christ from coming in the flesh, in our flesh, in our souls. And that's why that battle is being fought. Now, so we need to have a proper understanding of that. And then, and he said something, he said, um, it, power was given to him to overcome the saints. Uh, where did we read that? And he opened his mouth, um, and, and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 40 and two months. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and authority. Yes, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. So at the time when this he, which we read in verse 7, and he was given a mouth, so at the time when this he will come into manifestation, power will be given to him to overcome the saints. Hallelujah. Now that overcoming the saints does not mean one eternal overcoming the saints. It is as it appears. You understand? Because it is in that overcoming that we are overcome, that we overcome. Did you get that? It is in that, for example, this is what it means. Now, when this he comes about he's going, to, he's going to make the world so bad that people are not going to find jobs he's going to make the world so bad there are going to be stupid sexual preferences evil it's going to make the world so bad that people that are qualified don't get what they deserve and the guys are going to pray the saints are going to pray God help us and then they are going to want to, they will be presented with different options. And they are going to refuse those options. <clears throat> those options are just the daily things we go through. To lie here. For example, sometimes we can lie about our ages. You know, go look at the employment um, roster in a lot of offices today. 
there are people who have reduced their age by eight years, years some ten years there are people who claim to be 50 when my wife was still a young girl working and then you knew that this guy this baba is about 70 something there is 80 now so but they don't want to be overcome in that battle so you know what they did they changed their names i mean they changed their dates of birth which is against you know the word of god now because they don't want to be overcome but another saint comes a saint comes and then he refuses to change it and he was he's not given the job he refuses to sleep with the boss then he's not given the job he refuses to buy employment then he's not given the job and as it appears he over he overcome he, is, he has been overcome praise god Hallelujah. something happens around you and then you tell the truth you speak the truth you are but the system you know there you know he, 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 he said that there are principalities powers principalities give the principle by which the, the, the cultures of man is governed the powers enforce it you don't lie they make sure you die in poverty there's no government without legislation and without for, a power to make that's dunamis now force to make sure that anybody that errs against our principle is seriously dealt with. There are some people who have been believers who have refused to take money, government money, to eat government money, the way we call it, corruption to misappropriate money. And then today, they may not have more than one house. And their children who are not wise, who are not believers, I say, our father, I don't know. That man. I don't know. I don't know. How can somebody you don't even you, you're not even looking at us you're not counting us in see uh, brother this see bro, he has a house in atlanta georgia he has a house in um uh, in port Harcourt. he has a house in lagos he has houses everywhere he has secured his future <laughs> praise god when you refuse to go the way of the world that is the way he overcomes the saints but that is the way in which you overcome because you see, when you do the will of God, the life of God rises in you and beats death down, destroys death. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So power in that way will be given to him to, uh, to overcome the saints. So what we find out, who is this he? Who is this he? You know, and we have made a lot of issues about this he. Even though that he is walking rampantly everywhere right now. It's everywhere. We're even feeling him more now. Coronavirus is because of him. <laughs> this is he. You know, all of the evils we have found in our world is because of this he. There was a plane crash that happened and it, wasn't, it didn't really look like a plane crash. Crash. I am not said to that those people... See, there were two plane crashes that... The crashes, the, the crash sites was not actually representative or symbolic of the fact that a plane crashed there. There was a plane that just disappeared. These guys take people, they head, they can just decide, let's take, um, okay, which, just take any flight and then they're going to use those people for experiment. That's wickedness. Anyway, that's just. Um, now, so there are so much wickedness perpetrated. They, are say, they said about thousands of children get kidnapped every year. Thousands of children. Where do they go? You think all of them were butchered? Some were just put in one place and they were doing experiment with what they want humankind to be like. When, when, how would they, how would, some of those people that do that expose their bodies and all of that and that is their jobs a lot of them probably were taken as children and then they were groomed that way so they don't have any they were they, are, they were made to be apostles of those kinds of things in order to throw those things over the world because you wonder if you're you know one of the things i i find difficult i mean that that i i make sure that i try to do when i use the toilet i want to make sure that you know as men sometimes you close the trouser from on top before you do the zipper so sometimes you may not do the zipper and then you have closed the thing from up and you have foot belt then when you are watching your video you see that part of the between is just a little open say, ah 
<laughs> Let them show the camera. Let's see how many faces. Okay. Even though nothing was really exposed. That is our most private, 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 private. For a camera to be beamed on that with the person conscious is, is another type of mind. It's another, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's another type of mind entirely. So, but there are guys who seize people, who seize children and turn them to that. And then put them there. Some of them don't have families. They don't have, they don't have roots. They don't have anything. Because, for example, if you have roots now, if you have roots, you have family. At least your cousin is watching you. I'm not saying all of them don't have families. Some more, a lot of them. At least your cousin is watching you. You're, so the apostles, of course, they, 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 they recruit other people. What about war? These guys do all the war that they, have, they foment. Now, and they found a good land, a good grazing ground in the Islamic world. How do you take cutlass and cut another person's head? That, that mind is gone. That mind is totally gone. <clears throat> That is, the, uh, that is the working of this he that we're seeing physically. He had captured the minds of people. Captured their hearts. That is the mind of, Who is this he? Let's try to look at Because that's the person we're, going, we're, we're fighting with. We're just identifying the person we're fighting with. We talked about the point of, of, um, of contention. We are talking about the place of contention. We say the, there are two points of, the, of contention. Man. They are contending for man, and they are contending for his abode. The earth, and by extension, the entire universe. That's what they are contending for. And we say, where is the battle taking place? In the heavenlies. Hallelujah. But where is the heavenlies? In the soul of man. Hallelujah. There's a heavenlies spiritually. There's a heavenlies that answers to the soul of man. Praise God. <clears throat> now, and we're not talking about, who is this he that we are fighting against? Who is this he that is fighting against the saints? Because for a lot of us, for a lot of the church people, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking into the camera now, for a lot of the church people, we're still expecting the Antichrist. And I'm not saying the Antichrist may not, somebody may not show up and say, I'm the Antichrist. Like I said, all of these guys are reading the books. We have, they don't have light in themselves. So the misconceptions we have had, they are reading it. You understand? What Our interpretation or misinterpretation, they are reading it. So they are trying to play along with it. And try to, you know, it's like it's a decoy. God set a decoy for them by our misunderstanding. So they are trying to play according to our misunderstanding so that they can shortchange divine purpose. But there are people who have understanding that are coming for it. It's like an ambush. You have gone that way. Then you now see fire set in your camp. You know the way Joshua dealt with them. Huh? So he set some, a few men, like maybe a hundred of them. So when those ones saw that they came out of their cities, you know, men of great chest, men of bow, bow and arrow, they began to run. So the old chief men, all I was trying, about to appreciate Pastor uh, praise. I said, God kept us this way so that we will not be too visible. You understand? God kept us how? This way so that we will not be too visible. So that we will not be too conspicuous. So that we can do the work under. God, we are the army of God. And God reserves the right to, to put anybody wherever. In an, army, in an army. Yes. The army can post you anywhere. And they will give you a reward according to your faithfulness where you are posted. Some people are sleeper forces. You know, S-L-I-P-P-E-R. You know, sleeper cells. That just go in. And they are breaking, destroying Babylon, destroying Babylon in the, in, the, in, the, in the hearts of young people. And then when those young men come to the place of authority, they recognize Babylon when they see it. And they fight against Babylon. And these guys, these guys are wondering, where are these guys from? I thought they were in the big churches. We have already infiltrated the big places. We have already changed their doctrines. We have already given plenty of money so that things can change. We are already ruling them with the 48 laws of power. And I'm not saying every big church is like that. I'm not saying that at all. Even small churches. Mm. Hallelujah. Even we. 
who don't know that we are sleeper cells. Now, but when the product begin to come out into society in the place of rulership and dominion, then they say that these people have a different mind. Let's see the he. Then I stood, verse 13, verse, um, chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood at the signs of the sea, and I saw a great beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear. Can you notice that? Huh? Now the beast which I saw was like what? A leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power. Who gave him his power? The dragon. Who is that dragon? That's Satan. Revelation 12 tells us that dragon is called Satan. And Revelation chapter 20 also he also describes him. He said he was the one that was the serpent. Hallelujah. He became a dragon. How did he become a dragon? By seizing hold of the entire civilizations of man. That's how he became dragon. Hallelujah. Because he became a dragon with seven heads. Where does he, where did he get the heads from? In Daniel chapter 7. Hallelujah. Because in Daniel chapter 7, God listed the entire empire of man. Now, those empires were the strongest points of the diffusion of the satanic nature into humankind. Babylon. Babylon represented something. I won't be able to talk about it. Maybe we'll, talk, we'll organize another meeting and do that. Babylon represented something. Then, then like Medopasia. Medopasia represents on Now, they, 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 you know, it's like saying they contributed to the culture. You know, sometimes we talk about how what did the black man contribute to the human culture and all of that. The uh, Arabs, Arabs contributed the Arabic numerals. You know, one, two, three, four, five that we see today. You know, the ones that the Romans, with all their intelligence, the one that they had was, you know, the uh, Roman, you know, uh, stick, 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 X. You know, he just stick. Everything just stick. You know, you can put the stick across the other, it becomes an X. You understand? Then you put another stick, then you put another stick on top, you know, and and all that. It was all just stick, stick, stick that they have. But the Arabs stick, they contributed the, the numerals that they have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, I think I don't know whether they did the ten or somebody put the ten, whatever. So but that was their contribution. And then the the white world also contributed some a, a great deal. The Jewish world contributed a great deal. The Arabs were saying they're not going to buy, they were being urged, don't buy anything Jewish, don't buy. And they were looking at, don't buy anything Jewish. As at that time, Israel, you know, that during the time of the Intifada, Yasser Arafat, and all of these guys, say, don't buy, I see, don't buy their milk coming from Israel, don't buy their goods coming from Israel, don't buy the. And then somebody rose up and said, You have a lot of things not to buy if you are going to, if you are not going to buy things from a Jew. And then it, from penicillin to panadol to paracetamol to every. These guys invent from the intel on your computer from ah when I saw what the Jews have invented. Wow. In fact, if you remove, if there's a way to remove all that the Jews have invented and have contributed to the human culture, to this present culture, we'll go back to the Stone Age. <laughs> we just say ourselves without pants, without uh, <laughs> using leaves, <laughs> using chariots and uh, even chariots say, well, are you sure? They didn't contribute something. <laughs> Praise God. So I talked about so those four pivotal systems of man were recognized by God and set aside aside and say, This is the way this world came to become like this. Money place. Through the, much more than money. And then through the contribution of Persia and media and the together. To the contribution of uh, Grecia. Wow, those ones, eh? When it comes to beauty, till we, till we, we are still, this present generation is still running after the Grecians. When it comes, we're still, let me not use the word running after, we're still behind in the conception of beauty and um, flair and etiquette. I'm not talking of moral etiquette, I'm talking about all type of immoral type of behavior and then room ah 
government with power crushing. He said, like iron crushes. This guy is going to crush everything that is against it. Those four. And they were represented by animals. And those animals, one was a lion, and he has one head. And one was a deer, he has one head. One was a, a leopard, he had four heads, making six heads. And the other was the one that could not be described. He has one head by ten horns. Yeah. So these are the guys we're seeing here. They have co- God is saying that all of man, that man has ever be, been hopeful of becoming, that he has ever invented, and it was always evil. It's good and evil, but even that good is a cousin of the evil. They are, they are just, the good is to lure you into evil. So all of man is going to come to the fore at a particular time in human history. It's going to be known as a he because it's a being. And it's going to be very forceful. And it's going to come into the human culture and society and dominate everything. That's what he's saying. So, it's going to dominate everything. Totally. Nothing is going to be above him. In the human, except for those whose name, names are written in the book of life. Those whose names are written in the book of life are not Okay, those who are born again, God has a very one giant book, and then he's writing, say, Simon Luasusi. Your name is here. Be very careful. Your name is here. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Praise God. You know, <clears throat> this is what we have thought it is. <clears throat> but there are guys who are gunning after to see Christ domiciled in the flesh. To grow into that stature that is already theirs, which has already been given to them. Nobody's going to take it away from them. They are the only one that can stop that growth from that place. Depending on what they do with the warfare in the heavens. So, when we are still expecting one man, you know, we have been presented with the image of the Antichrist. We are, say, ha, 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 you know, and the fire will fall from heaven. You know, those guys are still speaking the same parable that John saw. They have not explained it. Praise God. They have not still explained it. Now, I'll close with this because I need to bring uh, Pastor up by seven. When Daniel saw the 70 weeks, um, 69 weeks was given to the Lord. Um, the prophecy stopped at a particular 69 weeks. And then there was a one week that was taken out. And it's a prophetic one week. Both the Pentecostals and the um, Evangelicals and everybody, all persuasions of the Christ life, whether they are low or high and all that, agreed to some extent relating to that. So, the 69 weeks. Uh, and they, they agreed that, okay, this other one week is a prophetic week. Now, <clears throat> and then, because, okay, let's see. I don't want to open. If I open, I, I don't want to keep, because I don't want to teach. I just want to let me, before pastor comes today, let me just explain something. I've been doing a lot of preaching and exhortation. So, let me have something to explain so that something that can be instrumental in changing mindsets. You understand? Okay. So, that one week, the, in that place in um, Daniel in chapter 9, it says that it talks about two princes. 